Star World. Star Torio. Star Deus. is a game about the dangers of AI. More specifically, why I shouldn't be trusted with it. A game of mind control, human gambling, as well as freezing to death in the vacuum of space, and being sponsored by Paradox Arc. Now, Star DDoS begins like many games before it, with a menu screen. Using the default scenario, we are presented with a ship that's half destroyed and now being run by an AI consciousness. Enter me, consensually. We start armed with our robotic enforcers such as Gaston, Borg King, and our fearless leader, John CEO. As it stands, our ship is in pieces, with everything separate wrecks. Across the map were our humans, who bring an important skill to the table, opposable thumbs. Took it over there, we first made a bridge of electrical connectors so their alcove would have power. Using our core, we could begin researching, starting with a way to fix our ship. Because we had no winches, we started with those. By placing a winch on one segment and a connector on the other, we could pull parts of the ship back together. Repeating it again, we connected the rest of the wreckage, but our ship was looking no less hideous. For our humans to actually do stuff, we need to give them the spacesuits we didn't have or fill rooms with oxygen and heat, because our ship was sitting at a cool negative 400 degrees. But for now, the humans were safe, mostly. In terms of research, we start the game with nothing. Somehow, despite creating an entire spaceship, we have not yet researched technology. Traversing the tech tree, we get access to all kinds of improvements. While we have total control over our robots, we can't actually control our humans directly. Or at least, not yet. We began to fill in the missing pieces of the ship and expand our power production. These matter reactors essentially burn any resource for power, although steel plates are generally the best. With more power, our humans were safe, but to get more people, we need to power our stasis array. This essentially represents the hundreds of people still in cryosleep, and by powering it, some would slowly wake up one at a time. But due to a malfunction, two colonists woke up early. Oh boy, I sure am ready for them to freeze to death. The vacuum of space is a little chilly. But in Star Deus, people are like essential oils. Practically useless, yet somehow worth a lot. In the meantime, our robots got to work, we researched oxygen, and our humans continued to waste time in their cell, walking around, eating, and crapping in our plant pots. Even after we filled in a solid chunk of the ship, there was still much more to go. What's at least nice is that our robots are similar to humans. They level up skills and can perform most tasks like building and hauling. To learn more, the game kept telling me to open the codex and play tutorials. A very helpful and informative tool I did not use. After starting and finishing heating research, we could make the ship livable, but there were unpowered devices everywhere. Power grids are a big thing in Star Deus, with all electronics needing to be linked with connectors and electrical grids. Sometimes they're simple, and other times they're like this. With our power lines done, we also enclosed the entire ship and started to fill it with oxygen. The only thing not enclosed was our core, because it generates an insane amount of heat. Too much heat and our core overload, so we have to take a nap. Hey. At last, our humans began doing stuff. Look at food here, building that wall slower than anyone else. Why do we keep them around? The stock market. But that was a ways off. First, we had other issues. Our people had gone about eight days with little food or water. Now, here's a little life hack that grocery stores don't want you to know. You could actually have your colonists hunger by feeding only one. I like to call this strategy dying. That just left food, who was a ray of sunshine at negative 100 mood. To make them happier, I looked in the codex. Turns out we could just, we did give them a toilet and shower. 10 days in. By making food happier, they began actually doing work, starting with baking Flim Flam's corpse into a moldy MRE. Taking an overview of the ship, everything was working well. Temperatures were rising, food was plentiful, and we'd started working towards the greatest galactic casino known to man. The wonders of the stock market. Before we could get started on gambling our money away, we had to research the bane of every stock analyst, basic economics. In Star Doodle, research requires power, lots of power. It also requires GPU and CPU, which we could increase by building special structures housing the latest RTX, it's over 9000. More power slash processing equates to faster research, so we could zoom ahead. While we waited on that, a storage capsule flew in, and in it was the last thing I expected. Absolutely nothing. We upgraded our basic walls to reinforced versions, increased food production, and repaired any damaged floors and structures. Surprise, surprise, that means the whole ship. Our progress was ever so slightly hindered by me accidentally overloading the electric grid, running out of power, and having a new pawn wake up. Davian spawned with one of the best traits too, slow pooper. Seeing as most of the ship was negative 150 degrees, pain, leading to a mental breakdown, so as a rational being, he wandered around, naked. On the bright side, we'd at least filled the ship with oxygen and started on space travel research. To start moving, we'd need more ship parts and engines, but we'd get there soon. We got our component production up, heated the remaining parts of the ship, and started processing 
Nutrients. Another cryosleep colonist woke up too, this one injured and refusing orders. Do you really think that'll stop me? We are aboard the USS Bezos. After getting food production running, we also began getting grinders for processing. One of the primary ways we gain more steel plates and other resources is processing ore, which we obtain from traders or planets. By building a bridge, we could access the solar system map and all of its planets. Here, we could travel to critically acclaimed worlds such as Sean Connery or Wombat. Once at the planet, it, we could send shuttles to the surface and extract resources. With food at the helm and some incredible thrust, we were moving at the lightning speed of a tiger shark on land. With our current engines, it was complicated. In my octo opinion, our setup was inefficient and a clear krill issue. While waiting, we built some treadmills, forcing our people to generate us power, giving them something to do besides socializing with our robots. Surely that's a productive conversation. We caused a mass blackout, again, unpackaged a living loot crate, and woke up another colonists. Snuggles, the enlightened. While almost to the planet, we finally researched the stock market. Naturally, I was greeted by a wallet disclaimer. Oh darn, I really thought Star Dudes was the place I could learn to trade the latest crypto and NFTs. Man, this pick goes so hard, and only I own it. Accessing the market gives us all sorts of graphs and charts, but it also allows stock trading. Right now, we were incredibly broke, so we'd get into it later. But what was on the market was an incredibly valuable object, called an Asimov Override. Meet Isaac Asimov, a famous science fiction writer and creator of the original Three Laws of Robotics. All of this culminates in this disgusting thing we like to call ethics. Without an Asimov override, we can't violate these principles because we are an AI. But with an override, we can get a little more creative. Unfortunately, the override is the most expensive item in the game, so we need to make money. And speaking of it, we'd arrived at the first planet. Being near a planet means we can launch expeditions to collect resources. By loading people or robots into a shuttle, little depart for the planet then start prospecting. To make money, we could use a terminal to call trade ships to our location. That way we could refine mined material and sell it for profit. I also set up teleporters to get around the ship faster, and much to my surprise, they didn't immediately disintegrate my people. With our new shipments of ore, more smelters were added to process it. But as surprising as it sounds, smelters are hot. But that's mostly fine. Okay, maybe not. Maybe putting our smelters in one room was a bad idea. 800 degrees of bad idea. While we put out the fires, I decided to just deconstruct the floor so our smelters would stay cold. And just while we were doing that, a stasis pot, which are usually filled with raiders, man-eating spiders, or worse. So to combat enemy raiders, I stole their floor, thus suffocating them in the vacuum of merchants. They were merchants. My bad guys, that's on me. Now while I hid all the evidence of my illegal activities, we had another problem. And it rhymes with annihilate. Uh steel plate. As a highly educated individual, I can tell you that this graph roughly translates to we are fucked. Because our entire power supply is based on burning steel, running out of steel is not good. Several mass power outages later, I wisely discovered that ignoring the problem did not actually solve it. Something we could make are solar panels, but placing them on the ship's edges is risky. Instead, I cleared out an area within the ship by replacing the floor with solar panels. While they helped a little, they didn't solve the steel issue, so we added more furnaces. Slowly but surely, our steel supply recovered and we were right back to polluting space. If history has taught me anything, it's that I have learned nothing. Because as another stasis pod rolled towards our colony, I figured the worst and assumed it as raiders, who were actually new colonists that I almost killed. With all these new people, we were running low on supplies. I called a trader but didn't have much money, so I turned to our robot, Gaston. Because no one works like Gaston, no one twerks like Gaston, or gets sold into slavery just like Gaston. Don't sue me. But with that, our steel plates were back on the rise and now only some people were starving. While we fixed that, our food supplies dwindled, we watched our power supply become more volatile than the Russian ruble, and our CEO had a total breakdown. But at least that was better than our humans who were on a hunger strike because they were hungry. Given they wouldn't do any work, I started transitioning into assemblers. These machines can do everything workbenches do, except they don't need people. That means we can craft all of our high tier items without needing humans to do it. To get the materials, we traveled to Bob, the planet. After loading the shuttle with starving colonists, they started to mine more ore. For additional profit, we researched liquid processing and built a refinery. So if burning steel plates wasn't bad enough, now we'd use oil. To permanently solve the malnutrition problem, I expanded our farms safely. What helped is that 
someone starve to death, feeding the masses. We deforested Bob, then moved on to the next planet to strip mine, with our new ore, assembler production reached sky high. By selling gears and other assorted goods, we bought a StarCred miner, the legal kind. Using our leveraged money, we could start trading in the stock market, specifically using options. Options derive value from some other good, meaning we have to pick something that we thought would increase in price. So naturally, I bought calls on humans, because people are kinda like options too. Their value is also derived from something else. While waiting for our assets to grow, another storage pod came in landing with Mr. Full name, Mr. Suckface. Going back to our human options, I decided to diversify our portfolio and buy cats too. We were calling so many traders our terminal exploded, but the money press didn't stop. After being a responsible investor and buying 1,696 shares of alien parasites, our wealth had skyrocketed. And just in time for a merchant ship trading in Asimov Override. By liquidating all our assets and tanking the price of cats, we purchased our final upgrade to becoming a real unethical machine intelligence. Now, with no ethical limits, we could do whatever we wanted. Overall, Stardeus is in early access, so most of the later game mechanics such as those are yet to be implemented. I am looking forward to watching the game evolve, so we'll see what happens. Some big criticisms though. With all these humans walking around, living, and worst of all, breathing, where are my kidneys? 